In part five of our Metro Photog service series, we're going to be talking all about power supplies and how to calculate your requirements. Welcome back, I'm Joe from MetroPhotog.com and this is the fifth installation in our server series of videos where we talk all about building a Soho server. In our first video we talked about why it's important to do so. In our second video we talked all about the case and power supply. Well not so much the power supply, we talked about the cooling of the case. Uh, in the third video we talked about all your power under the hood, your board processor, RAM, and even a video card if you need it. And in the last video we talked about uh, your storage pool, your main storage, your boot drive, what you need in those areas. So if you haven't watched any of those videos, make sure you go back and watch those videos as they are important to into building your server. In this video though, in part five, we're going to be talking all about delivering power, that's electricity, to all those important components. And so uh, power supplies are the most important, obviously, component of your system because without it, nothing else runs. So with your power supply, you want to make sure that you choose one that's delivering, delivering clean, efficient power to all of your components. And it's important to choose a power supply that is going to be, you know, not sucking up electricity and uh, when your computer is idle, just absolutely spinning your electric meter and charging you a lot of money. You want to choose something that what's now called 80, 80 plus efficient. Uh, and there's different levels of that, whether it's bronze, silver, or gold. You want something that's very power efficient and it's going to be delivering clean quiet power to all of your components. And it all depends on a system that you've chosen to go with. Earlier on in the server series we talked about whether you're going to be going with a server uh, dedicated hardware, if you're going to be going with desktop hardware or mobile hardware. And you need to look for a power supply that's going to be fitting into your environment. With the server system uh, there's excuse me a lot of different hard drives or excuse me a lot of different power supplies out there you know whether it's run redundant power supplies or regular power supplies that fit into these um, server cases so you have to look into your requirements there or if it's a desktop um, server system you have to be looking at the ATX power supplies and so make sure you are choosing and looking in the right area when uh, for depending upon your system when you're going to purchase these but how many watts do you need and this is always a big question of uh, you know people just go out and they buy a kilowatt power supply which is a thousand watts and do you really need that I mean do you need you know if you have the money to spend it and that's something you want to do that's great you always have the enough power to you know to support all of your components and if you're gonna go with two video cards or whatever but if you're on a budget and you want to know exactly how many watts you need how much you should be buying you really should go through sit down and figure out all the components you purchased already or all the components that you're looking to purchase and figure out how many watts exactly you need when your computer or your server or whatever is at the peak of its you know power requirement meaning that everything's running really hard and everything is going and now everything needs you know max amount of power and that depends whether it's a server a desktop whether it has embedded processor how many drives you have how many video cards you have how many external USB devices are being powered by your computer itself if they're not self-powered and so to compute those required watts, we're going to use a web calculator. And this is one that I've used for a while. It's from Extreme Outer Vision. And so I'll put a link in the description. It's extreme.outervision.com slash PSU calculate light. And so what that's going to do, and I'll, put, I'll just put a link in the description. Don't even try to, <laughs> try to type that in because I know I've screwed it up a couple of times. What, what you do is you just basically go through and through all the prompts you select everything that you you know planning on using or that you purchase already you choose your motherboard you choose your processor you choose the amount of RAM the speed of your RAM you choose you know how many drives or what type you, how many video cards or what type of video card you have how many USB devices and you just go through the whole list you hit calculate and it tells you this is how many watts you need to run your system and now so what you'll do is if say it says you know I think for mine it said like 425 watts I'm not going to go out and buy a 450 watt power supply because that's a little close. You know, what if I have a power spike in one of my components or something? So I'll go out and buy a 500, 600 watt power supply, something close to that. And that just illustrates to you that I didn't need to run out and spend two, three hundred dollars on a kilowatt power supply. I could choose something that's a lot more affordable and a lot more important. So check out that website, extreme.outervision.com slash PSU calculator light. 
I'll put a link in the description, calculate the exact power requirements that you need for your system, and then you know buy your power supply accordingly. And you want to make sure that you're planning for the future. You know, if you say to yourself, well, right now I don't have the money to buy, you know, two, you know, GTX 780s or whatever it is, but that's something you plan on doing, purchase the power supply, go on that website, and, you know, put those in that you, that's what you're going to use, and purchase a power supply accordingly. And then this way, when you buy them, you don't have to go out and buy another power supply, because that would make it even more expensive. Yeah, spend a little bit more now, but you won't have to be spending double buying a second power supply. Uh, to replace the first one that you put in because it's not enough power to power those two uh, video cards. So have your future plans in mind, maybe not too far into the future, but in the near future of what you plan on doing and when you're going to calculate these. So this was how we calculate and uh, choose the right adequate PSU for our system. Uh, I think for mine we chose a 600 watt Corsar system. I like to use Corsar because they are quiet and they do give clean efficient power. In our system we are using a, mo a modular power supply and what that means is that all the connectors that you're going to use to power your devices are separate and you plug them into the power supply. Uh, traditionally you just have this huge bundle of cables coming out of the power supply and then you'd start plugging them into your components as you needed them and then you had this rat's nest of cables that you didn't need and what's you know with a small server case like we have those wires just impede airflow, which is not good. So if you can afford a modular power supply or you could find them that's going to fit your need, that's you know preferably the way to go. Modular, less cables, less clutter, and that's always good for computers because that means less heat, less dust, all that stuff. So modular power supplies, 80 plus efficient, you know the right amount of watts, not too many, because you don't need to spend the money there if you don't have to. And that's how you choose a good efficient power supply. This video has been all about power supplies and delivering clean, efficient power and quiet power to your system. Thanks again for watching. In the next, excuse me, in the next video, we're going to be showing the assembly of our server, which would be pretty neat. Hope to be doing some pretty cool stuff to show that. Um, so make sure you're tuned in to watch that. Uh, make sure you like the video if it's helped you out in any way. Subscribe to our uh, Twitter and Facebook, or like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. That'll show you any videos that are coming out new or any other content that's coming out on their website. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Or you can go to metrophotog.com slash contact. Fill out the form. It'll send an email right to our inbox, and we'll answer that question as soon as we can. Thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.